Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Talk Nerdy to Me podcast. I'm your host, Justin Hayward. For this week's topic, I decided to dive into a subject that I have yet to bring up, and that is of video games and how they have impacted my life over the years. As I started as an observer of my older brother and his Game Boy Color and his Pokemon Yellow, I remember how much fun he was having playing this game. And so when I was finally old enough to get my own Game Boy, I remember having Pokemon Crystal at the time, and my love for this game really sort of impacted a lot of my choices in video games moving forward, as I'm still a huge Pokemon game collector. Uh, It kind of inspired a lot of the things that I'm doing now, including my uh, new D&D campaign uh, inspired from these memories. It's sort of a montage to that time called Monster Manual. You can check it out here on our channel for those of you listening to it on the podcast. I remember trying to play these games on road trips with uh, with the light on. There's like this little attachable light that you could put onto it. My parents telling me that I had to turn the light off because it was illegal to have lights on whenever uh, you were driving. And so, you know, up until I was probably like late adulthood, I really thought this was a law and that this was something that we were all supposed to follow. So whenever anybody would get in my car, I'd be like, hey, you gotta turn that light off, it's illegal. And people would be like, wait, what? Interesting times. But regardless, I think it was mostly just to keep my parents from being distracted and also because they wanted me to go to bed because I'd stay up late playing these games. Other games I remember playing were mostly from the PS1 to PS2 era. Um, these were the things that we kind of grew up having in my household. And so my older brother, he kind of was the one who had them, but I remember I was able to play them when I could. These are games like Spiral or Crash Bandicoot or even Bomberman. And I remember Bomberman was one of the games that we were all allowed to play because I have several siblings. Um, and we'd all play at the same time playing this game. And so it was one of the few like multiplayer games that we owned. It wasn't really until I went to daycare at this place called Small World that my true exposure to video games was cemented. And I feel like because of that, I was given a lot of unique experiences through this endeavor. Small World had a lot of different consoles, including outdated or even used consoles that weren't normally associated with these video games. Um, They had like Nintendo 64, Sega Dreamcast, to GameCube, to PS2. They had everything from old to new and in different locations. And so at some point, I was exposed to a lot of different video games. And I remember specifically with the Nintendo 64 games. These games were like Connor's Bad Fur Day or Banjo-Kazooie. And you know, these games sort of cemented what I thought storytelling would be like whenever I got older. I remember even as a kid, I was always terrible at video games, but I loved how they made me feel. The exposure to the world outside of my own felt like an escape that I could truly never give up. Growing up, I had access to additional systems, including my own GameCube that I got for a birthday gift uh, when I was like 11 or something. and. I remember that was like my primary gaming device until I like later adapted to the Xbox 360 or PS3 platforms. Up until high school, a lot of the games I played were pretty interactive with my friends or groups. Like I had a lot of like the SpongeBob games or like I remember I had like Legend of Zelda and it was probably one of the best games that ever came out, especially because you were able to like have your boat and, you know, sing songs in order to develop in that time frame. I remember a lot of my middle school friends, we'd all get together and we'd always play video games like Super Smash Bros. or even like, sometimes I'd watch one of my buddies and he'd pull out his Metal Gear Solid. And so I had a lot of exposure to a lot of different gaming types that I probably wouldn't normally have access to. It was really interesting because growing up in Japan, I always had exposure to more games than what were here in the US. But the downside was that they were always in Japanese. And so you would go to the store, for example, and you'd see all these games that you've never seen before. I remember specifically the one that kind of dives into my mind the most was when Pokemon um, Dungeons came out. And it was this dungeon based Pokemon game. I remember seeing these games in Japanese and being like, that looks really cool. I love Pokemon. I'd love to get this game, but not really seeing it in English until two years later. And so I always knew that these sort of game systems were gonna kind of flow into that sort of arc where eventually I get them, but because I didn't know Japanese, it was very difficult and kind of created a lot of barriers for myself because of the language barrier that I faced. Some of my favorite games growing up were Sonic Adventure Battles 2 for the GameCube. I don't know if anyone remembers that game. 
Um, I honestly think that a lot of that game is what inspired the new Sonic movie. And um, I don't want to really go into detail in case you haven't seen it, um, but I do think that the film has adapted a lot of the best attributes of that game, and I think that that's what made the movie so well done, in my opinion. I think one of the coolest elements of the Sonic Battle Avengers Battle 2 games were these things called Chows. They're like little kids, and basically you can customize them and give them abilities or whatever, and it also attached onto the Sonic Adventures ba uh, the Battles 2 that you got for your Game Boy, and so you could actually train them and like buff them up in your Game Boy and transfer them over to your GameCube. And it was one of the coolest parts because I would always transfer my favorite ones and get them bigger and uh, higher stats and then bring them over into the game and then sort of play within these worlds where they would eventually die and either go to the heaven or the hell of this sort of world. And it was probably one of the most unique aspects of a game I've ever seen. Another game that sort of sparked my mind and became my all-time favorite game was this game called Chibi Robo. And Chibi Robo is this game about a little robot with a plug-in tail. The idea is you're supposed to do tasks within this house and, you know, collect electricity and sort of do chores. The idea was that you're seeing the world through this sort of tiny creature's eyes. This creature, who, you know, is smaller than an inch or so. And so you see this world from a new perspective, just the basis of the world. And what really made it interesting was that the creators of this game took a normal setting like a house and they changed it and made it into a really interesting world building aspect. I think that's kind of one of the most interesting things that I've seen people do and it's kind of inspired a lot of the ways that I tell storytelling by changing normal aspects of someone's life and putting it into something new. I think that as I got older, obviously the types of games I played changed as uh, many of the games I started playing were first person shooters, such as Halo and Call of Duty. You know, these were amongst the top games at the time, so all of my high school friends, we'd always play together or whatever, and these were the games that everyone expected you to know how to play. I'm gonna be honest, I'm absolutely terrible at these games, but I found them enjoyable nonetheless, because I think with video games, it's not about the experience you get from playing these games by yourself in isolation, but rather the experiences you gain by sharing moments with your friends or the experiences you share by having something together. I think it's like a book, right? You read books with your friends and you have a topic to talk about. You can talk about something similar. What video games showed me were that stories needed movement, interesting characters, and the ability to create bonds from others through shared experiences and ultimately that I should use these rules today in everything that I do. I hope this gives you a little insight into the topic as we dive deeper into specifics in a later podcast, but thanks for listening and we hope to see you next time on the Talk Nerdy to Me podcast now going to be released on a weekly basis each Sunday.